So this is the app running here that I got running yesterday. Then I'm opening, I'm opening a shell. Uh, what do you use, coat? Yeah. Mm, no, that's not what we need. Close, close folder. Uh, then we go into decode proximity app. All right, let's do it. And I do open folder, right? Yes. Or you can do it from your, well, whatever you, you know. Yeah, good. All right, cool. And if we need to open a shell, we do it from here. That's one. And then the second one as well. All right. So the one that was already running, that's not? I, I don't know. Okay. Oh, it's just dead. They're dead. Good. So the shell is here. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, then let's try that one more. No. You, have to, you have to show, you have to pull down because it's not okay. showing this. Right. What is it? Is it? Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right, sorry for that delay, but something with my permissions went wrong. All right, yarn, start, let's do this. Yeah, the app is running already. Oh, the app is running? Yep. Okay. Here. Yeah, but is your Metro bundler running as well? Should be. Okay. But you, you might as well uh, close it and Metro Bond, I'm not sure it's running, but the app is running. Okay. So at some point it was running. Yeah, let's just rerun it then. Yeah, click here. You have, you have to be in the folder. You okay. The folder. What, what folder? OLS. CD desktop. AD. CD LS decode proximity app. Okay, cool. Right. Yarn start. Yeah. And then is there an easy way to just double click? Double here? click, yeah. Yep. Okay, same thing. Decode. Decode proximity. Yeah. All right. And then yarn, run. And, nope. No. This. Different language. Yeah. I have a Italian keyboard. Here we go. All right, now we should see the app load on this emulator. No, no bro. Yes, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this. Yes. Should be this one. And we should see the application, right? Where's the emulator? Here. Oh, fuck. You are in a, a remote desktop connection. So somewhere here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so now it's starting here. Yes. So the, the back buttons don't work. So we have to navigate only with the, with the mouse. Okay. Maybe you want to show the attributes because we're going to play with yes, them later. Yes, exactly. 
So here is where you can, where the user can add his or her attributes, which are used to, to later generate credentials. Yes. Here there are only three. Ah, okay, but you, this works on the phone. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. It doesn't work in the emulator. Yeah. Well, no idea why. But okay, let's 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 look at the code. Let's try and build uh, a a new flow within the within here. Okay. Then we'll look at the attributes later. All right. So yeah, let's just quickly build a an application that runs in the decode app. And this is just basically gonna I'm gonna take the same logic that I that I have already done and just make it a little bit simpler. So first we'll start with adding our own Zen room, Zen code contract. So we'll create a new folder. We'll call it, what should we call it? Um, web Ledger test. test. Webinar. Yeah. Webinar. Yeah, webinar. Yeah. And then we'll just take one of these keys. Let's just take this one. And, and what we want to do with our application is we want to run this send code contract and show the result, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Something quite simplistic. Mm, try and generate a heaper. I think that's the easiest. But OK. But you, try and use the, the generate keeper that is really somewhere else, if you can. Or, or, or just create a new one. OK, so key pair. Generator. Key pair gen. Yeah. That that send that js. Yeah. All right. And then we'll copy this. No, that's not a key generator. Yeah, well, we'll copy the no no no, no. the no, template. No. The template, yes, but not the script. Yeah. We'll, okay. We'll put in a new script. All right, cool. The new script go here. Here. Go to it. Yeah. Go to API room. No. Here, oh, okay. Yeah. Room.net. Yeah. Pick the first example. But I hope the SO file can handle it, ECDH and all that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. This generate keeper. Yeah. If ECDH doesn't work, we change it to something else, but this, this should work. Okay. Right. Copy. Here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Cool. We'll save that. And this is what we'll want to execute. And the next thing we want to do is so now we've done with the API. We have a very simple API. Then we move on to Redux. And we want to create a new module, right? So we don't want to put it in the applications folder. We want to put it in the modules folder since we're not going to be, because I can quickly show you how the, uh, the like every application state will also consist of all this, like store the branches, usage stats, and a whole bunch of helper states that we don't really need for this example. So we'll be putting it under modules. New file, we'll name it webinar.js. I'm, so, I'm sorry, can I ask one question? Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so the first thing that you did was uh, uh, create a definition in the API folder, but what, what I'm missing is, is this, is this like the client part of the API or uh, is this like the API API? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good question because we're, we're not really communicating externally. As far as I know, we're basically just saying what could, what Zen code is going to be executed, and we're calling it API. Yeah, it's a, it's an internal an internal API system. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just wondering what this API signif signifies within the app. What, what what's its role then? It, uh, right now, for what I've used it for, this is where I sto store all my Zen code contracts. For example, here for the different applications, this is where all this stuff is stored. Okay, so so you're going to execute Zen code yes. uh, inside of the app, and uh, you, you're 
there's like a subfolder and you call it API yes, yes, for this that. kind of stuff. Okay, just just to be clear. Okay, yeah, thank yeah, you. Of course, yeah. Good but course. I, I think that uh, if you click on API again, you call in the Atlas, which is uh, a small ontology inside the um, the application. Atlas.json, that's the ontology. Yeah, this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is a way to set up uh, uh, attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can we can look into that later. Anyway, for, for now, just uh, if we just follow the structure that was yeah. uh, drawn by the original developer, that's, that's what it looks yeah. like. And, and that's basically what I'm following. So he put all of the Zen codes in here. And so I'm also putting them in here in my own project application name. And to save some time, I think we're just going to copy paste a little bit. We'll just copy paste this whole thing and we'll just delete what we don't need. So um, this is using Redux. So if you're familiar with Redux, this is how you handle the state. The reducer handles it. And we only need, we'll keep two, but we'll rename them. That's the initial state. And the original developer used create selector to get the, the, state, the state variable. So we're also just gonna keep the same the way he used it. And ours is going to be called webinar. Um, why can't I go in here? Did it crash? Or is it just slow? Mm, I don't know. Shouldn't be. Maybe it's because we're sharing screen or something. No, because this is a remote desktop connection. Okay, well, yeah, did something. It was slow. It was slow in there. Okay. Now. So we're going to call this get webinar. And the prop is going to be called webinar. We don't need this. And we only need one action, which we're going to call. So basically, we're just going to dispatch one action. So all of these can go away. We only need one action here. The initial state will only have one result. That's basically what we want. We're going to execute the Zen code, and we're, we want to see the result that it gets back. And this is going to be stored here. And we can start with naming it. Keeper. Like, or zero. What do you mean? Was your single quotation? No, I don't have it. So go, oh, okay. control Z, control Z. Until you have it back. Okay. Yep. All right, so we'll name it Keeper not executed. Because that's what's going to show as soon as you start the, the app. And the name of the action is gonna be called Zenroom, Zenroom execution. Underscore? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to, and basically this is where the magic happens actually. This is where we're gonna call Zen room and we're gonna execute the contract. So we have to import the contract, which we called webinar 
What do we call it? What do we call it? We call it key pair gen dot zenco dot js. Okay, it doesn't like being called. Send me the dot. Maybe it's because we're not in the right folder. Zen room slash. No, shift seven. Okay. Slash webinar. Yeah, let's rename it. It doesn't like the dot there. So we'll just rename this. Get rid of the dot send. So this is basically the contract we want to execute and we want to tell it to execute it here. We're not passing any anything to it? Because... We're not passing anything. We don't want to debug. And the type that we're ex the type that we're dispatching is Zenroom execution. So all this there, and we're passing it with the result. We can name it result. We can change this to result. And the same thing here. Control, control what, V doesn't work. What do you mean? What do you need? Control V should work to do paste. Yeah, or did I, I just copy the wrong thing? Send room. Control C. Yeah. No, you press this, bro. Okay. Try, try again. Maybe. Okay. Control copy, control paste. <laughs> and we're passing the results here. If it fails, so this has to. We need to create a variable so the catch also has access to it. Where's your quotation? Colon. Colon. Semicolon. Sorry, it must be the other one. Right? The one next to it. Yeah. This. All right, cool. So result will be null if it's dispatched without. I could actually get you to move here and connect to the to, to there for that thing. Okay. Yeah, but we'll go finish what we're doing and then we do the. So that's basically it for. No, wait a minute. We need to do the reducer as well. Center of execution. We'll get. We'll get the result here. So we'll delete this one. We'll only have one case since we're only dealing with one very simple, very simple example. Okay, and that should be it for for the um, for the reducer. And of course, here we need to say get 
get webinar and to make sure that we get the results. Okay, that should be it. So here we're in this action, we're executing the Zen code. Then we're passing that result to the, we're dispatching the, wait a minute, this action needs to be, we're dispatching this action, which will set the result to the reducer. And the state update should show it in the, in the front end. But one thing we have to do is add this to the main store. So as you can see, every application has its own, has its own uh, reducer. So we need to add all the reducers into one, into one store. Where does he do that? Mm. An index here. We'll copy that. This is called webinar, and it's coming from webinar. webinar. Yeah. All right, uh, guys, uh, can we can we hear uh, can we hear where you are so far? If you could follow with no problem, if you have been uh, trying to do the same thing, if there is somewhere where you lost, for me, for me it's okay. Yeah. But we know that already because we've been working with the app. So, okay, everybody else, because I think for Sergio it's the same time, it's the first time, Stratos also, it's the first time you look at it. Yes, yes, for me it's the first time. But do you have, a, have you worked with React Native before? Yeah, I have worked, but using Closure Script, another language. Closure but, Script, wow. yeah. Okay, yeah. respect. <laughs> Sounds like some pro stuff. Yeah, no, not so much. It's functional, but yeah. yeah I know, I know. We also have code written in Clojure. Um, Stratos, you appeared. Well, you know, I'm, a, as I said before, I'm a native Android developer. So I'm, a, I like what's in this because I'm trying to understand what you're doing. But we're doing our stuff in a native app that we will publish next week in the repo. Uh, but I find some of the stuff useful because I've been working also in uh, backend applications with um, Node.js. Okay. So I, I can see some of this stuff uh, very relevant with our uh, middleware, actually. Not the mobile app, but some code snippets could go in our middle uh, middleware that will connect the native mobile app with uh, our service. Okay, cool. Uh, Taco? Yeah, I can follow it. Uh, okay. I did not have, uh, what is it? The Android development uh, setup, so uh, I didn't uh, go along live, but so far I can follow it. So the, basically what we should have done is a workshop, but doing a workshop in remote, I think is complicated because everybody has to share the screen and- uh, Yeah, and every environment is different. Yeah. Everything has to be set up. It, it, it would need some preparation. As, as yeah. you saw, I, I set it up a couple of days ago and I left it, I left it there. While Sebastian didn't do that and uh, yeah. it, it, it probably always takes an hour to set it up. Yeah. So that's something you have to do before. Okay. Um, Stefano Di Baldassare works with Antonio Di Battista, so I'm sure he's going to do a fine job. Antonio Romero? Yeah, I'm, I'm following. The, I'm not really writing or I mean I'm doing it in my computer because I'm also missing a second screen actually to, to do both ah, things at okay. the same time. That's fine. Yeah, but uh, it, it is recorded, right? So, yeah, so yeah, later yeah. on I can do it myself, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be online. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I'm not uh, familiar with React uh, too much, uh, but uh, okay, still, we are familiar with JavaScript, so that should cool. be fine. Yeah. Have you used Redux before? No, not really. We are, you're using Angular framework. Right. Um, okay, I, I know that it's, uh, I mean, if you know one, um, 
there are differences, but in the end, they are both uh, kind of uh, based on JavaScript. So yeah, I suppose it's kind okay. of okay. Uh, so I would say uh, save this and uh, move to your computer and I connect you okay. to, to, to remote desktop connection. So save, save this here because I can feel your pain that you... Yeah, the keyboard structure is not what I'm used to. Um, this is the right thing. Okay. Ah, but this is not Windows, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure to do this in Linux. Guys, I'll, I'll, I'll try to copy paste as much as possible. Now, guys, how do you do a remote desktop connection from a Linux to a Linux? How do you open a, a graphic user, inter a graphic uh, uh, that desktop remotely from Linux? Any idea? Is it open to the net, to the internet, both computers? No, but they, they are in the same network. So what you're seeing now, what you're seeing now is a Windows to Linux. Now we want to move from machine to where there's Linux on, so we have to do Linux to XRDP. What, what have you changed your keyboard to in America? I think uh, VNC, I, yeah, I, I have pasted a link on the chat. Yeah, and okay, we found, we found a different solution. We're gonna change the keyboard because I have, okay. I have uh, a, a an American keyboard, but with Italian keyboard on top. So hold on a second. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Um. Hey, that was right there. Ah, true. Good. Easy peasy. We could have done it a while ago. Yes. Right. Okay, let me share my screen again then. Let's hope that this time it will be better. Good. Okay, let's let's carry on. So how do they share the screen? Here? It's share the screen, screen mm -hmm. but it's sharing only the top. No, sharing this one. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right, so basically now we've done the application process and now we need to connect this to the front end. And to connect to the front end, we go into screens and we make our own screen here. So we're gonna call it webinar. And the way this developer has done it, he's, he's made a component that basically holds a React component with the JSX and everything here. And then he's done a container that connects the J or the React component to, to Redux basically. So it matches the props, it matches the states to some props that you can get from the component. And then, and then a style file. And he exports it in an index.js. So we're basically gonna be doing the same thing. Webinar. We're going to create a new file. We're going to call it webinar.component.js. And for the sake of speediness, I'm just going to copy paste from one of these. Copy this component. Paste it. And since we're not going to be using everything, I'm just going to delete some of this. Keep only the stuff we're going to use. This is a, this component is called webinar and the props that we want, we basically just want two props, the result and the action that executes Zen room, which is, which we called call Zen room.
we don't need these. And what do we want to show on our screen? We just want to uh, we just want a button that will show the result. So basically, we we'll say webinar webinar example. And here we'll just say show results. Uh, bro, did you change the keyboard? Click here. No. No. Here. No. It didn't change. No. Okay. I don't know what's going on. All right, all good, all good. Just use double quotes. Say show result example. Just show result. And then here in this button, we'll just say execute send. And all this basically we don't need, so we'll delete it. And here's where we'll show the result. Results. All right, cool. And then this is basically what's gonna be shown on top of the screen, just to see what menu item you are in. So we'll just say webinar. Webinar. And the prop types, we're just gonna be using one prop type result and that's the type string. So we'll keep that and just change this result. And we're exporting webinar. This looks right, so let's hope it is. There are still the COVID navigation options in prop types. Do they need to uh, be renamed to webinar? Yes, thank you. You're right. Yes. Awesome teamwork. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Save that. And then we need to hook up this component to the container. So we need to create a file called webinar container.js. And again, for the sake of saving some time, I'm just going to copy paste from here. It's so practical that we have a dummy thing for <laughs> in the application. But of course, we don't need all of this. First, we need to import get result, I think it's called. Can I give a suggestion? Also, not to you per se, but to the makers of the of the decode app. Yeah. I, I mean, this uh, um, like this uh, subtractive programming is already cool. But uh, it would be great to have some um, uh, code generators, you know, where, where you, uh, instead of uh, taking the, a dummy file and then, uh, you know, uh, reducing it to what you need, you would give a command and then uh, create uh, these files with the right names and only the attributes you need. Yeah. But this is just a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, it's sort of like a, a little framework or something. Yes, I think uh, from what I've seen, uh, what, what Dine is making, it's all very programmer friendly. And I, I think this would be a very good addition to this app. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so when you want to create a new application, you just have to plug in a few, a few things. Yes, yeah, so like a little command line app. And then you say, um, for example, uh, 
uh, application generate webinar uh, uh, with uh, the keys uh, result, yeah. for example. And then uh, it would create the same boilerplate type stuff. Yes. Only instead of doing it all manually and, uh, and, and subtractive, you would uh, do it by uh, defining some uh, some things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And this this process would also be a lot easier. Yes. So this is my suggestion. Yeah. Good. Good. Do the note. And this is coming from. Call this result. So now we're just matching the state to the props. And I should not have deleted that. I'll just do this result. And it's coming from get result. And we have one dispatch, which is called Zen Room. And actually, we can delete all of this. Oh, they had one called Zenroom already, okay. Why is this throwing an error here? Why are you complaining about this? All right, I think that's it. And that's it for our component. So now our component is done. And the final thing we have to do is add it to the main, to the, to the navigation stack, basically. So, so we can click on the menu and it goes to this screen. And that is done in the root screen. Not in the container, the component. So basically the pattern is that you set up a stack and you add that stack to the navigation, to the create stack navigator. So again, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna copy the dummy, the dummy stack. Here. This is called the webinar stack. Webinar screen. We have to import it. We'll do that in a bit. We don't have anything that comes after this screen, so we'll delete that. It's using the default navigation options, that's fine. And now we have to add it to the to this create drawer navigator. So we'll add it to the end here. We'll just copy this one. Oh, 
webinar stack screen is and we'll call it webinar test. And then we just have to import it. Let's go paste this. We're not getting it from the applications. We're getting it from webinar. No, just webinar. Yeah. Actually. We did forget one important thing here. Uh, the styles and the index.js. So the index.js is the file. In this case, this is how the developer did it. The index file exports, exports all the components. So we'll just copy paste this. for webinar container. Why is he complaining? I don't know, it's correct. Mm. And we'll also get a style. Let's get it from, let's get this style because this is one I've used before. Make sure we're importing the right style here. Screens webinar. So that's it. Let's build it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if it works. All right. Um, it's not here. So we're using these ones, right? No. So let's run it. Make sure everything's safe. Yes. See if we get any errors. Let's go to the emulator. Oh, shit. Uh, API General Webinar, unable to resolve the module API General Webinar from the Copper Semi App Source Redux. So there, must, there might be a path that is wrong. API General Webinar. Redux modules. Webinar JS. That's probably not there. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Redux modules webinar JS. So we might have forgot something. So in this index. Redux modules webinar JS. Redux modules is right here. So it's not loading it somewhere. Not importing it. We're exporting default. Yeah. 
Hmm. Let me do some API. Zen webinar from home. API Zen room webinar. Do we have it? API, API Zen, Zen room. It's a folder. Ah, okay. Again, because he uses the indexes to export. So we have to actually create an index.js to export right. this. Good. Just wondering, does the app, the app also have like a test suite where you can uh, like see if this module works, for example? Um, like a test suite? Yeah, it does. Okay. Keep pair chat. Actually, it's just called keep pair chat. No, without it. All right, let's try relaunching it. God damn it, what now? API is a message unable to resolve the function. Hmm. There's something wrong here. Export keeper trend from keyboard gen? Or no, no, but it even does it for the ones that work. Ah, okay. So it's definitely not that. Okay. What the fuck? Does not exist. Now we have to rebuild it. Mm, yeah, yeah. So let's try this. Control C. Shouldn't matter though, but. Very strange. I don't know. Did you save everything? Yeah. Now, is it is it right that it, uh, that key pair gen doesn't have a dot js after it? I'm not sure. I'm just guessing here. Uh, normally, when you don't have to add the dot js. Uh, okay. Okay. From dot zen. Do you have a where I didn't see any dot send? No, but I, I didn't add it here. Like these ones have dot send behind them. I didn't yeah. add it here. So it should be fine. Maybe it may be a keeper gen dot js there. Yeah, that's what he just said, but that's not how it works. You, you don't have to add the dot. Yeah, but the others do. The other had the extension. <clears throat> no, check, check they, the they didn't. It's just dot send. Now without dot js. Ah, okay. And I'm importing this in my Redux. Okay. And here, key pair gen. Uh -huh. API, API, API Zen Room webinar. That should be right. 
Hmm. Try and save altar and rebuild. No. No. Click the end okay. and do Just yes. Yeah. No. no. Come on, build. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea about this. Uh, Webinar.js. Webinar.js now. What? <clears throat> so this one we're calling it from our from our container. Get result, call API And these two are exported. Get result, exported, calls in. Redux modules webinar, I mean. French, I don't know. Um, Does not exist in the haste module map. Clear watchman. Could it be some caching, some gradle stuff? Could be actually, maybe. Should we try that? Yeah. So if we go in here and clean the gradle. I just want to say, I'm really glad that you were giving us an honest impression of what it's like to uh, develop uh, for this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, kudos for that. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna, if it doesn't work now, I'm not gonna start debugging it right here. So, but I mean, it is exactly the same paths I've done to, to make some other, to make some other uh, applications inside Deco. So it's definitely the same approach that you have to take. Yeah, thanks for that. So, should we look at the? Uh, should we look at something else for this slides? So, uh, how long is it going to take? I don't know. To load. To load. It should be loading now. Yeah. Okay. No. I don't know. Same shit. Same shit. Um, yes, uh, we could look at uh, the attributes. Uh, actually, the app, 
Okay, let me let me see this. All right, maybe, maybe try to see if you can uh, if you can figure something out. Well, yeah. Okay. Because I won't I won't need this. Ah, but we we can't get you connected. Ah. What I can do? Hold on, I can I can push this. All right, never mind. We'll look this. Uh, we'll look at this in a little while. Okay. Uh, and a concept that you may be you may be using if you look at the app. So oh, I have to change it back. So uh, by the way, uh, the app that you've seen, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it to the repo. Which is the this the code up rep? I believe I have, I have access to it, so that you can uh, you can clone it and uh, move on with it. Uh, if you go here, tools decodeproject.eu slash app. Everyone, I'm sending you a link. You also have a link to to the the deployment. So there is something that we tried to do before in the emulator that didn't work, but it works in the deployed app, which can you see me here? Yeah, okay. So this is the deployed app. That's the first screen you see when you open it. If you click on the hamburger here. When you say deployed, it's in the app store in the Google. Yes, yeah, right? it's in the app store. When you click on the hamburger, you see that the first thing you can look at are is my attributes, all right? I'm gonna try to click on it. Here we go. And here I have already three attributes that I've created. I'm gonna delete one. Yeah, okay. Now I have two left. The two are gender and age. I'm gonna click on add attribute. It asks me, so the, the only attribute I can add, because this, this is how this flow is built, is the, the place I live in Barcelona. So the district, and I do this, and he asks me to pick a district. And uh, so it, it pulls down a list. I have to pick one, I'm gonna pick uh, now Barris, and then he asks me to save, okay? All right. So those are the attributes that I have on the app. Why, what do I do with the attributes? I do something called attribute-based credential that you look at on the Zenroom page. Yeah, my whenever I have a share my screen and my webcam, my computer is super slow. Right. So if you look at this, you see that the concept of attribute-based credential goes hand in hand with zero knowledge proof. What does this mean? Uh, the way a zero knowledge proof uh, flow works is the following. Uh, let's say that uh, I need a credential slash certificate. Same thing that uh, states that I have, uh, that I have, I'm, Ita I'm an Italian citizen. So let's say that I want the, the Italian uh, consulate of Copenhagen to produce a certificate stating that I'm Italian. How do I do? I go to the embassy, show my passport, and then something happens electronically, digitally. What happens is that uh, my, my phone is gonna, my phone was previously generated a key pair, is gonna, uh, produce a credential request that is going to be sent to the issuer. The issuer will check, so there will be a person checking that my passport is right, and after they check this, then they will sign the credential request producing a credential. That's what I get back. And later I can, I can use this credential to prove that I'm Italian without the need to show my passport. So this is the concept of zero knowledge proof. Attribute made based credential means that quite literally, you can have uh, a list of attributes, or if you like, a list of credentials chained next to each other. So I can have a JSON file with three credentials, 
uh, each of them uh, proves something else. One proves that I'm Italian, one proves uh, that I was born in 1977, one proves that I have a dark hair or gray hair, well, however you like it. Those are the attributes. So each thing that I get proved from an issuer is an attribute. The credential is the cryptographical object that proves, well, that I use to, to prove that I have a certain attribute. In the app, going back to the app, those are the attributes that I, that I state to have. And uh, what, is, what happens in the background is that I'm gonna, these attributes are being communicated to the issuer. The issuer here will automatically sign them. So they will trust uh, everything that I see because that's how the flow is built. And later on, uh, some operation will require that I share, for example, my gender and uh, where in what area of Barcelona I live. Some other will only require that I share my age. When I'm sharing my age, what happens in reality is that the wallet, so the, the application, sends to the whatever API is uh, uh, following the, the, the knowledge per flow, it will send over the credential requested. So it will, they will ask me, uh, I, I need a credential stating your age. And I will send that the, the wallet will send over the, the, the credential I received. And if the credential matches what they want to match, then the cryptography flow will, will go on and uh, the rest of the algorithm, algorithm can run. This is something that has been built in the application. And where was it that we found it, uh, Seb, here? Yes. Attributes. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll let you speak a couple of minutes about that. Uh, is the Redux, right? The Redux. I mean, I haven't worked with attributes myself. So. Okay, but uh, so it, the script that uh, uses the attributes happens to be this one, credential request dot zen. So if we follow where the script is executed, we will see where the attributes are executed. And we have been looking at it before. I think we saw something before. What yeah, in, in the DDC application they're using. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. So here, this one, right? Yes. What was it? DDC this container, one. the container. Container, okay. Uh, create. Get certificates. Yes, so this is the, that's the method, right? Yes. So that's the method that uh, tries to get uh, credentials, so certificates. Exactly. Using, one, using that contract. Using that contract, so one per each attribute. Uh, why am I saying this? Because I, our friends uh, from Global Passport Projects, uh, you will have uh, migrants uh, with, uh, with different attributes. You will have migrants from different countries. So for example, you have an attribute per country. You will have uh, miners that are juvenile. You will have uh, miners that are, I don't know, they have a special condition. And based on that, you may want them to access certain, uh, uh, certain services or be able to do certain things. Uh, so this is the way you manage the attributes in, uh, in this application. Uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about this now because we, we, we had this, this discussion with Sebastian. Sebastian, uh, he, he, wasn't really, uh, he wasn't really aware of the purpose of yeah. the attributes. So in order to understand why attributes are built this way in the decode application, you need to understand the underlying cryptography, which is, uh, which is what I've just uh, showed you. So once you, have, um, once you have a grasp on how the attributes are managing the application, then I can show you what you have to do in the backend, which is super simple. To, to get uh, the credentials slash attributes assigned. Are you about, you want to say something? You want to add uh, anything? That's, yeah. So that, that was the one. Basically covers it. Yeah, it was one thing. So it is uh, nearly half past four. Uh, unless uh, we go on the crazy project of the bugging, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever uh, happened here, I think that, 
since you've been listening for two hours and a half now, nearly, yeah. I think maybe we can, you can ask some questions and we can wrap it up. And I think that the most important part about what, what I, the, basically what, the main point that I wanted to make by coding this example was showing the structure of how the decode app is. Like what, what different folders do what, and uh, how the application process links to the, uh, to the UX and so on. And I hope you got a somewhat clearer picture of that.